We're in studio this morning with the Honorable Mr. Masalia Mudavadi, a presidential candidate and uh, who knows, soon to be, maybe, President of the Republic of the 254. And uh, we've got tons and tons of questions for you today, sir. Mm -hmm. um, very many people tweeting in and uh, going right into it. The, the question of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. uh, you have spoken about reconciliation mm -hmm. and uh, reconciling all of the different factions and all of the um, and, and, and dampening, really, if not uh, totally dealing with the very heavy sentiments that there are in this country. Um, uh, one of the questions that's come up, in fact, is, is your ethnicity part of what is at play to create this balance? Because there is a view that one coalition is uh, more, if I can put it delicately, Nyanza based, and the other one is more centrally based, and that yours being the Luya faction, let's just call it wh wh what it is, would be the third party that, the re that is the reconciliatory one. Well, I think um, th th that's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, but I'd, I'd want to say that, uh, frankly speaking, uh, something different has happened um, as we move into this general election. As much as one might want to say that um, uh, ethnicity cannot be wished away, um, but you will find uh, an interesting development in the sense that uh, uh, Raila has got Kalonzo for his running mate, mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, Uhuru with Ruto as his running mate. And you have Musalia Mudavadi with uh, Kioni as his running mate. And you can look at uh, the other approaches. So to a certain extent, um, there's a significant development uh, that is taking place, uh, that we are beginning to see a situation where uh, the, the whole aspect of uh, ethnicity as the sole determinant um, of Kenya's politics is beginning to crack. Uh, I'm not saying that it's gone, but it's beginning to crack. So I think that aspect is a positive development. Now, the second aspect uh, I want to address here is that um, uh, when I say we are offering uh, the alternative, uh, we are not offering the alternative because I'm a lawyer uh, by birth. Uh, we are offering the alternative because we believe our coalition stands for peace, uh, stands for reconciliation, um, and and the issues uh, that I said um, fed into the crisis, as somebody rightly said here, is that uh, the, the highly ethnic political background that we were coming from uh, fueled the 2007-2008 election. But then subsequently, a botched election uh, literally ignited uh, the, the, the sentiments at, at, at that time. Now, that has led us to a situation where there are wounds uh, in our society. Uh, there are wounds in the hearts of people. There are wounds in the minds of people. And those are the wounds that we say that um, um, we need to find a way of, of, of uh, healing. And that is where the Amani coalition comes in. Not particularly as an ethnic entity, but as uh, an organ a political coalition set up that wants to get Kenyans uh, to focus on a peace-building process. Moving um, away f uh, slightly from that and mm -hmm. going to your second point, which is one on security. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of insecurity mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the recent past in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, both internally mm -hmm. and uh, what is allegedly externally motivated insecurity. So, for example, the Isli uh, bombings and the grenade mm -hmm. attacks, mm -hmm. the massacres in Baragoy and uh, in the Tana Delta, and now, lately, of course, the incredible saga of the alleged fake cop, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Weiganjo. How do you see yourself being able to secure security in Kenya? Um, first of all, some positive steps have been taken by the Kenyan people, uh, and we must build from there. I within the framework of the new constitution, they have created um, new structures to help in uh, modernizing the police force. You have the oversight commission, um, you also have uh, the commission of the police itself. Uh, the, the oversight one, remember, is the one that will take in complaints and, and, and be able uh, to, to, to investigate uh, malpractices and shortcomings within the police service. This was never there before. It was the police simply investigating uh, itself. 
but now you have an entity that can be able to do that. And the second phase is that with the commission, then there can be a proper scheme of service for the police um, in, 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 in our country. So I think these are important uh, steps that have been taken. But as we move forward, uh, let me put it very clearly that one, we have to acknowledge that there's a serious shortage um, of manpower within the police structure relative to international standards. Um, the international standards, according to the UN records, is that you need to have one policeman to 450 citizens. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we are dealing with one policeman to about 1,200 uh, citizens. So clearly, one policeman is doing the work of about three mm -hmm. um, uh, police officers. Now, that cannot provide the sufficient traction in dealing with security-related matters. So clearly, as we move forward, there must be something to do to increase uh, the police force. In total, we could be having about 260, 270,000 policemen in the entire in the entire country. Policemen and women, sorry, in the entire country. Now, uh, and our population is close to 40 million. So we need to do something in that area. Second is that we must invest in in in, um, in what makes them tick. They need. Uh, to, to be well remunerated, they will then need to have uh, sufficient equipment, police equipment, they have to be mobile. Um, all these are issues that uh, we as Kenyans must uh, progressively but also urgently invest in our police system to make it uh, much better. Now that is when I'm dealing with uh, the police system, but broadly uh, you must also uh, put some of this responsibility to the uh, Kenyan people themselves. Uh, security is not just about the men and women in uniform. Uh, we also must have uh, a sense of being party as a nation, uh, to ensuring that we are vigilant, to ensure that we are all observant, and we are able to communicate what is right. And the last bit that needs to go with the security is an efficient judicial system. Well, changing tax just a little bit here, um, I, I want to ask you about some recent comments you made about the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, mm -hmm. um, saying that, you know, it's too burdensome for young children. I think there are some parents out there who would agree with you. But wh what is the Amani Coalition's plans? Do you have any plans to overhaul our educational system? And also, how does this, how do you see that working in, in conjunction with the high unemployment among our youth when yeah. they leave school? I think this, this is something I'm fairly passionate about, uh, because... If we just look at um, the results that were released mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago, uh, you will find that uh, close to 60% um, of young fellows, uh, boys and girls, between the age of uh, 14 um, uh, up to perhaps 16, right. uh, and these are children, mm -hmm. maybe 60% of them have been guillotined out of an educational system. Uh, and mark the word I'm using, guillotine. Yes. Out of an educational system, and then they're being pushed into a labor market. Now, legally, that is child labor, mm -hmm. because they have not uh, attained the age of maturity. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that you guys are condemned, you've been guillotined, uh, you cannot move anymore, so you have to find your way out. Now, that to me is very cruel uh, for our society. And uh, therefore, I believe that uh, the KCPE examination should not be a guillotine exam. Uh, it may be a test, uh, but we should provide and we can provide for basic education up to fourth form level. Um, we, we, we can realign our resources in our country. Uh, we can stop pilferage and we can make sure that this is available uh, to get our children up to the fourth form level. Uh, when they're closer to 18 or they're about 18, um, that way you're keeping them out of the unemployed ranks, but you're also offering them an opportunity uh, to better their, their, their academic uh, skills. If they can't get to university, then at least you can now prepare them to go to some polytechnics where they can uh, get other skills that could, could um, uh, be of assistance uh, in their in their in their career. Now, I believe 
this is doable. And in, the, in our coalition, we are working clearly to say that this is what we want to offer uh, the Kenyan people. Our constitution now defines basic education up to the fourth form level. It's not up to standard eight. It's up to the fourth form level. So from pre-primary up to the fourth form level. So these are the areas that we'd like to focus and on. And that would mean, of course, treating the teachers in the same way that, that you've just talked about treating the, the police mm -hmm. with adequate remuneration. Do you have a, a position on that as well? Yes, there would, clearly there would need to be adequate remuneration. And um, what... what uh, what we can see happening in our country, uh, in spite of uh, some of the shortcomings we have, is that progressively we are seeing uh, better realignment of resources. Um, we are, for instance, we have seen more investment in infrastructure. We have seen uh, the country being able to provide free primary education. So if we look at it carefully, if we continue to improve on realignment of resources and, and put them where they should be, uh, we can go uh, places mm -hmm. in this country. Of course, all of this, um, as you've rightly pointed out, requires resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of Kenyans are just saying, show us the money. Already, we have a, a government that is suffering under the weight of recurrent expenditure. In fact, a, a conservative estimate say about 60 to 70 percent, perhaps even more, of our debt is in relation to recurrent expenditure. And now we're about to go into even bigger government. How do you intend specifically to streamline the economy so that you can find the money that is so needed for the police and the teachers? Now, one, one thing is uh, clear. First of all, as we said, dealing with the pilferage is one thing, and that can be done. By um, pilferage, you mean corruption? Uh, there could be corruption, there could be just inefficiency. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, one of the uh, things that I can pride take pride in is that um, when I was Minister for Finance, uh, I participated fully. In fact, I brought the legislation that created the Kenya Revenue uh, Authority. Um, and uh, it was formed during my time as, as, uh, as Minister for Finance. And when you look at it, the level of revenue collection that it has been able to, to bring out is it has been showing systematic progression in terms of increased revenue collection and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is that if we continue to enhance the efficiency of the Kenya Revenue Authority, uh, we'll be doing the right thing. The second thing is that um, we must uh, get our economy growing. Uh, and to get our economy growing, uh, to, uh, some fundamental issues must come in. One, um, we must make sure that uh, the institutions that support uh, th that economy are efficient and running well. Um, we must have the agencies that deal with corruption to work effectively and efficiently. Uh, the law enforcement agencies must be right. Uh, we must at the same time have policies uh, that are not uh, st strangling the private sector. Um, we must as a nation uh, also make sure that we are not looking at the private sector as as an opposition. You know, sometimes when people talk about the private sector, they talk of the private sector as if they are enemies of, 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 of society. Yet it is that private sector that will primarily uh, generate the revenue that is required uh, to fund our social programs. So I would want to put in place uh, measures in consultation with the private sector mm -hmm. that will aggressively allow them to grow um, their, their business. The other aspect that um, uh, would be important is that we cannot run away from the fact that uh, we must also have uh, good traction with the international community. Uh, there are some people who, who, who continue talking uh, and, and uh, cheating Kenyans that uh, we can operate without the international community. Uh, that is a white lie. And it, it, it must be uh, eliminated uh, from our minds because uh, exports are important. Mm -hmm. um, we must have the right atmosphere to export. We must have an economy that will give us the right stability in terms of our foreign uh, exchange levels. And all these are important ingredients to enable us to fund what we are talking about.